dependence. And that, yeah, and that is a major falsehood because um, these guys understood the principle of true slavery and colonialism. Yeah. If you look at the tragedy of the, 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 the millions of the Jews who died in the wilderness, it was simply because they didn't realize that slavery, Egypt, was not just a mere physical location, mm. and that it was a person. Yeah, it was yeah. a mindset. It was, it was a mindset. It was a personality. Yeah. 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 And so they got stuck in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. because slavery could not inherit freedom. Mm -hmm. That was the problem, yeah. So the Africans, you see Nigeria, were said to have had independence with British Western culture, education, language, uh, political system, financial economic system, now including religion. Now, so you ask yourself, so what now is independence? What is sovereignty, right? What is that self basis of self identity? There's none. Yeah. None. So we'll start, let's leave it there. And the same thing they did in Cameroon with all the Francophone countries. All the, yes, all the, yes. Yeah. yes. You know, yeah. what, what, so that, the, the, the Francophone, um, the French were very, they were more brazen. The French yeah, were sure. brazen. In that, yeah. when, as they were giving the, or the British being very diplomatic, would do the same thing yeah. eventually that the French did but in a stylish, yeah. silent way. way. Yeah. You know, the, the French had a, an agreement with <laughs> all their colonial, ex-colonial territories that, right. that they were going to have the right of ref first refusal on any mm -hmm. discovered, yet yeah. to be discovered values under the soil. Mm -hmm. the they were going to be printing yeah. their money from them, for them from France, and then yes. France was going to give them fifteen percent of that money to run their economy, much like the headquarter churches in uh, Nigeria do to the, you know, the, the I'm talking about the big ones, you know. So, so, and the first person that tried it to get away from, I think it was Sekuture or some somebody, someone like that. Mm. Do you know what they did? Yeah. They yeah. felled all the electric poles. <laughs> they they blocked all the drainages. They, yeah, the French drainages. destroyed the schools. Yeah. They said it was the gain of colonialism. And since the since the Guineans, I think it was Guinea also, did not want yeah. to be under them anymore, they were going to destroy it. Now, one of the things, just for the a brief moment, one of the things that we yeah with leadership and um, especially the position of president of the presidency the um, and then the house uh, is that these guys when they get there they meet certain things on the ground which are in forms of international conventions and all that yeah then apart from that they will negotiate their own survivor with the west yeah IMF, yeah. World Bank, all of these guys. Now, the president that was that is there now, what we have seen is that he has negotiated Nigeria away with these guys mm -hmm. because so that they could die, they could kill his uh, his uh, yeah. Uh, yeah whatever records and all that. Yeah. Yes. No, well, we'll talk. We'll talk, sir. We'll talk more about it here. We'll talk. Yeah. Uh, the solutions, are, the solutions are here now. Yes, yeah. kingdom. Solutions are kingdom. Here. Sons of the kingdom. The solutions yeah. are with the sons of the kingdom. That's right. Yeah. The solution is here. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Benny. We need to do something along that line. We will we, we, we'll be our convention in uh, uh, August ending will be called the, the Inheritance. It's going to oh, be a really? very fiery convention. <laughs> it's going to be a fiery convention. The inheritance, you know. Inheritance. Yes. Yeah, that's the way. Yes, we're going to approach it from different views. You know, I, I know the Pentecostal theology thinks the inheritance is just what we have in Christ Jesus. But, of course, that's basically what it is. But beyond that are the things that the Lord has given to man. 
put to us, I mean given to us here. And then the earth and all that there is in it. Praise God. So um, I want to welcome everybody once more. Um, uh, Pastor Chidi, God bless you from Australia. Uh, Pastor Busola, God bless you. Dickness, uh, um, Dickness Party, God bless you. Sister Teresa, God bless you. Pastor Benny, God bless you. Sabine Pei, God bless you. Uh, uh, I don't know, Brother Larry, I'm thinking Larry is um, a male here. Sister Sarah, God bless you. Um, Minister Felicity, God bless you. Pastor Nelly, God bless you. Victor, God bless you. Esther, God bless you. Okay, well, um, I'm trusting God that um, as the time progresses, many more people would realize that it's time for the meeting and then they will join us. Lord, we want to thank you, we want to give you praise, we want to thank you for all that you have uh, done for us and all that you are, you, you are going to do that is in your plans for the last days. We want to appreciate and bless you and glorify you for your good. Yeah. Um, grant unto me utterance today, grant unto me understanding, grant unto your people understanding also. Let us be able to you know, um, you know, minister to one another's um, spirits by listening and by contributing also in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to appreciate God once more for tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord for He is good and His mercies endure forever and ever. So we are looking at the topic um, within church day about self. The hope of our calling, the hope of our calling, or of his calling. You know, that scripture, I mean, that phrase is drawn from the scripture in Ephesians in chapter 1, and it has to do with what is the hope, what is what does God have in mind, what does God have want to achieve? What does God want to achieve by calling? by setting up what we know as a church, which is actually supposed to be the ecclesia. But whether we, 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 we hold the former name church or the name, the name that by which it has always been known, church, or we are part of the revolutionaries who have who believe that it is the ecclesia. We're not wrong. Um, but what does the person who founded this system you know, that is called the Ecclesia or the church. What does he have in mind? What is the reason that he has? Because if we're able to locate the reason why he founded it, why he started it, then we would know how to live within it, how to live in such a way that we do not um, overshoot the foundations and so that we can build upon the foundations, you know, because sometimes um, some most some of us are very fundamental and so foundational that we are fixated on the moves and the pop and and the part of the purpose of God that have been expressed in the body of Christ in the past, and I'm starting from that way that place tonight. Some of the time where we are very, I mean, we. We are fixated on that, you know, that when certain people begin to talk about taking the nations and all that, some people say, well, it is not about politics. You people are talking about politics. Nothing co to those people, God has no concerns about the nations other than for them to be born again. It's all because we don't understand the purpose. Now, and also much more in this day and hour, in this time, when there's so much going on in the body of Christ, there's a guy today who sells salt, he sells water, you know. I don't know. Has anybody seen that um, that um, video? You know, he sells he sells uh, water. The only thing he has not started selling is holy fuel. Mm. He has not started selling petrol <laughs> or gas. <laughs> Praise God! He has not started selling those ones. So we see all these kinds of things, and then we are amazed. Especially if you have been privileged to come out from a very deep and the good foundation of the faith, of our faith. You are, you are very privileged, and there's a reason why God made you to go through that. I mean, 
it is because he wants you to be a light and a salt in this light, in this time and in our generation you know so um but there are two sides to it really they are the side of those who are you know obviously out of the way they don't understand what the body of christ is all about you know they're out of the way they do different kinds of things some occultic some some humanistic different kinds of things that they do and then we also have people who are genuine christians who are so solid they are solid believers but they do not believe um that it should be beyond the revelations of god should be beyond the evangelical they do not believe that the revelations of god should be beyond the pentecostal and even in the pentecostal they are very limited they are very afraid they are very afraid you know, when you begin to talk about immortality, translocation, by location, ah, there are red, red, there are red flags go up very fast and very large. You know, and all that. So, so there, there are, there, that's that's another group on another side. But the truth is that God has a purpose for the body of Christ. There is a purpose, and I always tell people, and Scripture also has affirmed it, that there's an end to it. There's an end. You know. What I mean by there is an end is that there's a place where everything dovetails into. There is a place where we can say, oh, the purpose for God raising us, founding this body, you know, has been accomplished. There's a place we get to and we say, God will say, oh, wow, it's done. It is done. We see it in scripture when he said, it is done. So these are the things where, um, that the Lord is giving us the privilege to look at tonight, tomorrow, and possibly next tomorrow, by the grace of God. I want us to just do an hour so that we'll be encouraged to come um, um, again tomorrow and next tomorrow by His grace. Yes, so in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 to 18, I know if somebody has their Bibles here and then wants to um, open with us Ephesians in chapter 1 can somebody read that um, verse um, 17 to 18 <clears throat> so that at least we will be able to participate even if we are not preaching yeah that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory yes. may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him Yes. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, yes. that ye may know what is the hope of his calling yes. and what riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, yes. and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Yes. Praise God. So it says that we need to know, there's a need to know what the hope of his calling is when he called us now that's what calling there is not it's not talking about the calling to be an apostle calling well that's also a part of it but it's not fundamentally that that's not what he's talking about there he's talking about the fact that you have been called into the faith actually our 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 relationship with jesus christ is called the call you know it's generally also known as call we've been called into the body of christ and it's also known as our faith we have been, you know, it's our faith. This is our, our faith overcomes the world and all that. So that is what he's talking about. He said, what is the hope of his calling? You know, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in you as a saint, as a child of God, and the achieving greatness of his power towards us, you know, as believers. So God has a purpose. He has a call. He, he, he has a hope for that calling. Okay, um, somebody is saying here, um, okay, Felicity posted it. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. So there's a full revelation of the hope of his calling. Hallelujah. So there's a full revelation. There's a, ep that word full revelation actually means epignosis or epigenosis, because that is full knowledge that will come into it. Many people came into the Lord Jesus Christ, came into church, and all they ever knew was the God that will answer prayers. So that's, the, that's, that's all they have ever known. Some people came into Christ and then, or joined the church, 
Eventually, they became born again. They may not have been born again even as at that time when they joined the church. But they just joined the church, and over time, they became born again, and they never left that foundation of the experience that brought them into church. So when those kinds of people grew, and they got to a place where they, could stay, where they began to gain confidence, and then, you, then they feel they are called of God, and what, what you see those kinds of people doing is that they go, they just maintain that one lane alone. And it's a, it's a good thing to maintain a particular lane. But they don't, they don't look at the entire structure of the body. In, in other words, you see, there's one of the ways, one of the examples that God um, compares the body of Christ to is the human body. Now, in the human body, Pastor Ferreira is a medical person. I don't know whether there's any doctor here that can tell us um, a little bit about it also. You know, but Pastor Ferreira, I want you to agree with me or not if I'm wrong. There's a clockwork in the body. Once a baby is born, what I mean by clockwork is that if there's a little grow, growth of the stature, that little growth is distributed all over the body. So in other words, you don't see a 15-year-old whose hand, except there's something wrong, but on a good day, who's a 50 or maybe a, a 40-year-old, the hand is short like as this, and then the head is big and covers this entire screen. You hardly see that because the that thing that brings growth, maybe it's the multiplication of cells, renewal of cells or whatever, actually takes into cognizance the entire body. So the hand is not trying to grow and fill this room while the leg is just you know just as short as as it should be normally you know when that situation occurs i think it is it is a cancerous situation except maybe there's an other types of an anomaly so that you can call it um so you know when a believer okay pastor Ferreira, can you say something about that i saw that you yeah, what I just added is to agree with what you've said. The body grows proportionately. Yes. Um, for example, the tongue, the cell structure of the tongue and the cell structure of, uh, let me say, the, the leaves, um, they have the same fundamental structure, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, um, the, the nucleus and all other things, you know, ribosomes and all other things. But the tongue cannot just grow just because it wants to grow. The tongue must grow in a proportional way to the lips, to the eyes, to the skin, to the liver, to the organ. So there is a clock. Yeah. Everybody will be. Yes. Everybody will be. Yeah. So you cannot say, oh, I'm a tongue. I just want to grow. Let me just produce more cells and have a big tongue. No, it doesn't just work like that. The tongue is the tongue can grow, but it's not free to grow. I don't know if what I'm yeah, saying. It's not free to grow beyond the proportion that has been ascribed to it. Yes. So, so there's terrible. something like with the clock that regulates everything in it so that you look exactly what you are supposed to look like. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Thank you very much, Pastor. So this growth we're talking about now, we're not just we're not we're not started talking about the external growth we're talking about the um the internal mental growth how does that what does that mean it means um as i've been called in the area of prayer i've been called in the area of prayer, i am more centered in the area of teaching the scriptures for people to understand holiness and all of that now i must I must um, attempt continually to make sure that my mind is in step with the entire structure of the body of Christ. You know, in the body, in the natural body, it, it is an involuntary growth. It is an involuntary growth in proportion. But you see, in the body of Christ, it's supposed to be an involuntary growth, also there's an involuntary side to it. But some of those involuntary sides to it come when we want to do certain things and God prevents us from doing it. <laughs> but let's talk about the main, mental one first. Now, the voluntary, the voluntary, okay, there's that involuntary, which means whether you like it or not, this is the way the body is structured and the DNA makes sure that the, the body of Christ comes out in that way. Now, there's the voluntary aspect. 
The voluntary aspect is that everybody that is in the body of Christ must come to the place where they understand what the body of Christ is about. The purpose for the body, the proportion for the body. In case, okay, let's see um, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 as we go on. Ephesians 3 16, can somebody read for us? Ephesians 3 16. Yeah, somebody wants to read. I'm hit, I'm there, but I don't want to read. Okay, can we, let's, let's start from 14. Can we start from 14? Start from okay. 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So That's we come all. from the same family. It's the same family. If everybody believes in the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are of the same family. Yeah, can we continue? Yeah, Pastor. So of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Praise God. Did you see that? He says, he says um, that um, that it will grant you, I'm looking for that place, verse, I think it's verse 17. 18. 18. 18. May be able to comprehend with all saints. Did you see? Not just some people. You see, the, the standard of let me use the word Christianity. Okay. The word Christianity. The standard of Christianity that we have presently is very low in comparison to how what we're supposed to have. Because you see, over the centuries, we have adopted this uh, system of the laity and the clergy. It was not supposed to be so. The ministers were supposed to be first among equals. They were just supposed to be loving leaders. Who, the, who were not professionals in such a way that um, they, have, they, have, they have come to a place of professionalism um, to service the rest of the people while the rest of the people moved away. Because that's, that's Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is, a, and Paul told us, he warned us about this. You see, Paul said, for we are not come to a mountain that may be touched, not to a physical mountain, and to the voice of thunders, and to you know earthquake and the voice that trumpeted so much and it was so scary that the people said Moses go hear God for us now one of the greatest problems is that stems from that misunderstanding we have professionalized the ministers to such an extent that the we the people come they know their place the pastors also know the people's place you understand? And, and I'm not talking about being unruly. I'm talking about understanding that what you know shouldn't be a secret that you hold in order to rule over the brethren. You know, when, you know, in civilizations, when kingdoms started, people began to discover the law of nature, and then there was one strong man. So somebody will make discovery. People have their gifts and all of that. Then somebody could mine, somebody could fight, come, somebody could do experiments. Now the king, once the once you had something valuable, you brought it to the king. And then the king paid you for it, and then the king clones it up and says, Okay, this is for me. So no, it's not open to anybody. So, you know, that's why mathematics in the in the uh, in the ancient day, in the ancient times. Mathematics was actually a cult science. Physics was a cult science. And they had it 4,000 years ago. Let me tell you this. I saw it many years ago on the TV, on a documentary. The pyramid was built with um, um, a calculation of, I don't know how to say word to, to express that word, but it's two pi r squared. They had known all those things since then. You know what you call Pythagoras theorem? About 4,000 years ago, Pythagoras left Greece 
to go and learn mathematics in in Egypt. He was a mathematician himself, but and when he came first, they denied him. He denied him entry. He couldn't. He had to go back to his land. Then he came again. That was when they now allowed him. He was the one the the right angle triangle. Those things have been there. Theory yeah. of relativity. E is M C squared. Yeah. Okay, but that's I Einstein, which is not too far from us, Albert Einstein. But we're talking about the Pythagoras theorem. I'm talking four thousand years ago. Uh, this guy was in the 1950s. Uh, e M C squared. 1950s. Uh, Albert Einstein. Talking about four thousand years ago. Now that's the way the kings ruled. The kings ruled by having more might than the people. The kings ruled by having more knowledge than the people. You understand? The king ruled by having more properties than the people. He said, it shall not be so among you. You know, because if it is so among you, okay, let me not leave what I was talking about before. So I shouldn't come into certain types of knowledge whereby I hide it from the people so that I can, I can um, be masters over them because I know more than them. Do you know that's what the seminaries are for? Even though it was not meant to be that way, there will always be a minister's class. But I'm saying that even those minister's class, they are, they, our objective is to make the people know what we know. We should not, you know, sometimes um, you are invited to a place and then you start to teach, you say, teaching, you know, who wants to listen to teaching? You know, because we say, we think the people should just get nursery school material. But if you want to be a minister, you come, 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 we'll teach you, we'll teach you the secret. It should not be so. You see, because you don't know who God will call among those people that you're hiding information from. And I know what I'm talking about because I feel it sometimes. I feel it sometimes. When I, there are some knowledge, you know, but you know, anyway, let me, let me, let me share this story. There's some knowledge I want to put out there and I feel like, oh God, people who don't know these things now let, let me just confess it and then they will even acknowledge where they learned it from his flesh his minister's flesh but you see one of the things that 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 closes it to the people is that they are not even interested in some of the things most of the things i see so sometimes i'm bringing something very strong very deep very massive people don't even look at it so i'm not afraid to put it out anymore because i know they won't read it Somebody say if you want to hide anything from an African man, he say put it in a book. He say put it in a book. But this is not even about Africa. If you want to hide anything from from church people, put it, make it something that they can't relate to in the physical. If I said, oh, so I got ten cars, glory be to God, I got ten cars from my trading, you know, and all that. Last week, a lot of people will like it. A lot of people will like it. But if I begin to talk about the facts of the temple of God, the house of God, the foundations of the people don't want to hear. But that is those are the things we, God wants the people to know. God wants his people to know because we don't know among all of these people who is going to be called of God tomorrow or that have been called of God from his mother's womb. Did you see what happened to Paul when, when, God, when he became born again? When he received the call of God, I'm not saying call of God to ministry. When he became born again, because that's a call, it's a general call to us. When he became born again, he went to the to those who are apostles before him, just some of them. Then he went away also and began to study. And if there was anything that Paul did, Paul made sure that he poured out his soul to the people of God. So the people of God are not just supposed to know life application principles. You know that is the ABC of the gospel, life application gospel, and then we will know about justification. We will know about identification. We will know about um, about the measurement of the house of God. We will know about come up either. We will know about um, uh, the coming of the Lord. The people don't know about it except you want to scare them about it. They don't know anything about it. They just get what we call life application. Work hard. Dress well. The way you dress, the way you be addressed. So when they are going, and, and even in the ministries, even in the seminaries of even Pentecostals, 
apart from the Asian Pentecostal, like I told them, um, uh, four square and co we teach the ministers those who will be ministers what we teach them because i attended one of them are just those life applications principle of prosperity principle of healing they don't go deep they don't go deep they don't they don't understand depths they don't look at paul they don't see the doctrines of paul they don't look at the doctrines of john why is john different from paul why is peter different from uh, from uh, from paul what are they trying to say you know what is you know those they don't look at it what are the feasts of god about what is the, what are the implications in the new testament and in the as the church moves and progresses they don't know those things so when they go and start ministry they teach life application and life application you see the spirit of man is deep because it was god that called them so the spirit of god Will be pulling them in pulling them in but there's nothing to pull them into because they don't have depth so they have thought about dress where well you'll be addressed this is the, then they will not go higher they will not go to stephen covey they will go to napoleon hill they will go to this one go to that one and then you know they will go to all those areas then when they want to go deeper again they will look for another person you know go to obama say what obama said what ronald reagan said what uh, 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 the Rothschilds, how they built their companies how those kinds of things happened you know they will go into all of that praise god because there's no debt they are to them they have exhausted bible jesus christ is lord the when you can be in revelation chapter one and be lost you can be in Hebrews chapter one and be lost. <laughs> you get there. When I say lost, I say you will be there. You will be there, and you will. You can stay there for one year. I know of a minister that ministers from the book of Hebrews. That man is an inwi when it comes to the book of Hebrews. They don't know about the Melchizedek order. They don't know about all of these things. Yet they say it when they speak. But there's no biblical foundations for it because this you know the spirit is the spirit also lead, we always lead you right but you see we need to have an anchor where the spirit can rest until the bird rested that noah sent out the people i mean there was no assurance that the flood was over for the flood to be over the the bird must rest the spirit is the bird so there must be something bible says where there is no wood the fire goeth out so today we have seen different kind of biblical, you know, you know, different kinds of Bible um, interpretations and all of that. Why? Because the people don't they they did not go into the depths of God. They don't have understanding about that. So we should not have a place where. We, we come to that place where we hide knowledge. And I, like I said, I understand what it means to hide knowledge. Because for I, I remember many years ago when, we, when, a lot, when God's generals came out, you know, God's generals was something we had been following in our little fellowship from the late 80s. We we're following um, Leadon. We followed Leadon to the late 80s. I saw heaven and all of that. And when it began, God's generals. So later, it now became. Yeah, thank you, sir. So it now became. When it became a general thing, everybody was not taking those books around. Before then, there was no book. It was just, it just did the videos. So we watched the videos. You know, we prayed for one year. Our pastor, Revelation, he led us in prayer for revival. Strong people, a people strong and mighty, strong guys. We prayed for one year non-stop it led us it was consistent for one year non-stop so when we saw those things everywhere everybody now talking about it i felt a little bit ah everybody has known about it you understand so it's people hide knowledge in fact a friend called me and said ah these things you are supposed to you are just letting them out like that you're just letting them out you know so these are the things that make that has made the church or the body of Christ, or the ecclesia, as we want to call them. But the ecclesia is actually a first fruit of the, of the body of Christ. Yeah, it is where we're growing into. You know, we cannot even call ourselves ecclesia at this time. You know, even though that is the goal, that is the goal of Christ. Say, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, so 
So to understand, we were reading, there was someone we were reading before in Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 16. And we're looking at verse 18. See that, that they will know the length, the breadth, the depth, the height. So the body of Christ has all those things. It has the length, it has breadth, it has depth, it has height. In the book of Revelation, Paul, I mean John tells us that this the city of God was high, great. Had, had walls that were high, they had foundations, four foundations. You know, a lot of people don't know about that. So, these are the reasons why we see people misbehaving. Sometimes, back, this thing that I'm talking about, you don't, when, when a people, when God's people stand, I was, they sit in front of you and you are ministering to them, you don't know who God is going to call. So if we don't give them all, and God is going to judge us for not giving all, we must in fully impart our souls. We must give everything that God has given to us. Yes, of course, we know that we speak wisdom among the perfect. That's among the mature. I mean, the wisdom there is the deep things of God. You understand? Because babies may not know certain things, but we need to grow them beyond babyhood and give them, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't delay when our children start, you know, start demanding for, for, for solid food. So the same way, say solid meat belong it onto a class of people so we should get them to the place where they where they have solid meat and then when they have solid meat the solid meat is not the ability just to do signs and wonders and miracles because you see if we do that there will be trials in along the line of that ministry for example we have grown some of our people and they have become very great but they don't know the fundamental structure of the length, the breadth, the height. They don't they, they, they can't picture the whole of the body of Christ in their mind, in their minds. You know, we, sh we should carry that DNA of what the mind of Christ is. Because, I mean, rather, of what the house of God is, the measurement. So that we that that you know, I said there's an involuntary part and there's a voluntary part. So that when the voluntary part aspect is demanded of us, we can put it in the right place. For example, this, this is what I'm saying. I'm teaching a people about about uh, let's say money. Okay, let's just be outlandish. Let's let's be outlandish. You know the more extreme things. Let us about money, and I taught them about money for one year. Then when I feel that oh I need to garnish this thing, I need to garnish it a little. There I, I throw little holiness. I just throw little holiness to just to garnish it. But it's not even about you know. It's just about even holiness. There are some knowledge that comes that makes us who so apprehend the entire structure of the body that holiness in itself will be fulfilled without even mentioning the word holiness. You know, when we are hot, H O T, for the Lord, there are certain things that don't even cross the mind because there is wood and the wood is burning, the fire is burning. Many years ago, my grandfather, my grandfather, very, very um, um, sensible man, very brilliant man, my mother's father. Somebody was making eba. Somebody was making eba in the uh, in the kitchen, and the person was afraid that I mean, he was making it, turning it, was was afraid that the flies were going to perch on it. And then my grandfather said, "How can?" flies perch on hot eba because you know it was not the way they made the eba is not the way we we you know just it will it will be oozing with with the heat and that's it so when when there's heat there are certain things that won't even come of course we will teach holiness we teach all of those things but it will not be because our consciences are affecting us that oh i've been teaching money money all this while let me teach this as a you know. and then for example, if we, even this morning that we're talking about now, if we understand the body, if we understand the purpose of the body, which we, we see, you know, this is just the introduction. If we understand the purpose of the body, we will know that money, <laughs> money is a system that will be destroyed. I don't know what will come in the place of it. But money, as it has been used by Babylon today, is going to be destroyed. So you can imagine that all I've spent my life to do is about that. When I get to heaven, what am I going to tell Jesus? 
What am I going to tell Jesus? And I'm not trying to say it as a as one um, as just sophistry of um, uh, being committed to God. You know all those kinds of money, no be anything. You know. That's not what I'm talking about. The truth is that if we understand that Jesus Christ came with the kingdom, I will be sharing about that and others maybe tomorrow, next tomorrow. You know, with the kingdom, you know that the kingdom of man, the kingdom of man is the ruler of the kingdom of man is called money praise god the ruler is the you know, the kingdom of man is is mammon they call it mammon is money so if christ is coming to take over the kingdom of man you know his major enemy is that thing and i'm not saying god doesn't promise to to, to provide for us. And that's a different thing entirely. God has allowed us to walk in Babylon. He told Israel to go walk in Babylon, to live in Babylon, do your trade in Babylon. But by the time we make it the major issue, that's why today you can see what's going on in the body of Christ. You can see small, small boys using elder, ancient men, using them as mopping stick. They are, they are doing themselves, so those small, small boys, I, I, I pity them. I pity them. When anybody, when somebody has cancer tomorrow and he's lying on his bed, the God that he has rejected, the God that he has said is fake miracle, he'll be looking for that miracle. In fact, if he can get fake miracle at that time, he will, gladly, he will pay for it. Just be watching and just give them 10 years. All these guys are shouting. You will see sickness, you see disease. Satan knows how to walk people into evil. And I'm, see, but God is using them to do something, he's using them to judge the body. Because he needs to bring us back. But, when, when is, is, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the way Jesus Christ used it in relation to, to Judas. The sin will come, but woe unto the, unto the person which it comes. So, the reason why God has to use these small, small boys that are destroying, that are, that are, that are, oh God, you need to, you need to be, maybe if you are not being online, you won't understand what I'm talking about. You need to see how they are dressing men of God down. Those ones are not sometimes they talk, <laughs> talk, but the reason is because the fathers did not have full understanding. Now, one of the issues whereby we didn't have the full understanding is to think that God is not concerned about the earth and that all that God is thinking about, I mean, is to take us to heaven to go and live there. And that so, when He takes us to heaven, of course, what is the earth going to do? You know. What the earth will be useless. So let us take some people because of that understanding. A class of us, the evangelicals and Pentecostal Orthodox people, they rejected the earth totally. They said, "Not God does not want us to have any good thing." In fact, in the seventies in Nigeria, in the sixties, if you had a car, you will hide it. You will hide it from your brethren because you are going worldly. You understand? But in fact, you are backsliding already. You are backsliding. Yes, yes, you are backsliding. You are backsliding. If you have a car, you have TV, you have all those things. Ah, you are backsliding, totally backsliding. And I, there, are, there are examples, which just I don't want to go into details of. People went to visit people and they saw new chairs, sexy. They sat in the man's chair, on the man's chair, and the thing sank down. Hey! Brought it backslide and all that. Now, there are people like that. There's another group that now went too far and said, oh, God is taking out of us out of this world, so let's use this world until you know. And in the, in the presence of using the world, we are now sunk in the world. But what is the total? What we're not trying to strike any balance. We're just going for the God, for what God says. So, for example, we're using the example of money. Money. <laughs> that thing. Let me tell you. You need to just. Maybe today Google something and, and find out about how money came. Let me give you let me give you certain examples. There's a man called Nikolai Tesla in the very early 20th century. He was the one who discovered electricity that he built a tower for electricity and it could power the whole of New York. As at that time, his kind of electricity is the kind that we use for our phones today. 
they will, he will plug it inside his naked wire. You put naked wire on his head, you, you know, just like this one. This one, he cannot do anything to you. And it goes through the air. The kind of electricity that he built could go through the air. They rejected his own. They rejected his own. Why? They took another man from Edison. You know, so the one that can show sure cannot because that one they will be able to measure it as at that time. So and in measuring it, they put money on top of it. So you have to they attach money to it. So if you want to use this measure you pay, you know the way your meter runs. Why did they not allow human beings to just use things? To just use it free of charge. That is what Mammon does. So this thing that you call money, that they wrote value of uh, 20 naira, 1,000 naira, and all of that, there is wickedness behind it. And it doesn't go to the most righteous person. You cannot imagine if all I spent my life to do is to preach about this thing. How, many, how much people have got from it. Now, but there's another way about teaching about prosperity and the fact that God wants us to prosper and be in health. Praise God. Get them to look unto God and do and, and do divine principles. This money will come to them, but it will not own them. And they will understand. Teach them the rudiments. We just had some of the things we should begin to tell the people of God so that they can know. Don't, let's not just teach them application of life. So, yeah, you know, go to the depths, the depths that brought you up to where you are. Tell them. <laughs> Praise God. What made you stand strong like this? Reveal it to them. So that in case any one of them is going to be called to ministry, they have roots. They are not just using life application and then growing from my life application of Bible, then go to think and grow rich. Then from that think and grow rich, they will now go to they will grow to Stephen Covey. Then from Stephen Covey, they will grow to uh, Oprah Winfrey. Then from Oprah Winfrey, they will go to Obama. The richest man in Babylon. The richest man in Babylon. <laughs> Which are things that people have discovered, you understand? But you see, the truth is that they look like life, but those things are not life. They can produce the likeness of what life, yes, can produce, but they are not life on their own. The scriptures has the wisdom of God and the power of God. In fact, some of these guys got the thing from the scriptures, but they were cult guys. Because in their cult, they also love Jesus and they use Bible. They recognize Jesus as a guru. Not that they love Jesus. They recognize Jesus as a guru. And they also use the Bible. Give the people the, the bottom pot that brought you to where you are. Let us not treat the people as if they are laity. Then we are supposed to know better. They will know small. That's not the kingdom. That's not the purpose. It, it will not allow the, 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 the people of God to understand the purpose for the body of Christ. Now, let me give an example. There was a certain pastor years ago. One guy left him and um, uh, not that he left him, he was not in the ministry, he was a vulcanizer. He was not part of his uh, people. You know, but maybe through fasting and prayer, you know, this Yoruba Yoruba thing, fasting and prayer, fasting. You know, I tell people if you can fast and pray, you can do a lot of things in the spirit realm, even if you are not a Christian. You can fast and pray and know something. So, in, in fasting and prayer, if, if you can fast, you can pray, and then you are also a believer, and you are a minister, of course. God, people will gather because miracles will happen. God will answer prayers. Hallelujah. Prayer answering. Is one of the cheapest ways things that God can do. Do you know? Do you know there is a guy who did not follow them, who did not follow Jesus's company, but they were using his name. If the names of the seven, if the name of Jesus in the in the mouth of the seven sons of Skiba was not working before, they wouldn't have tested it like that. Now on the on the that was not the first time they were doing it. It had used to work. God just wanted to put a stop to it that day so that Paul was in town. So that people can pay attention to the gospel. He said, we, 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 we use your name. We use your say Peter, was it Peter that came to Jesus? I said, Sir, we saw one guy there, they have built a big church, massive ministry, and they are using your name. He said, Leave them now. <laughs> Praise God. Say, leave them. 
was working. So the fact that he's working doesn't really mean that the people have great understanding. So the same source of Kiva, if they were using it, it was working. So that maybe that one passed their level at that time, or maybe God wanted to expose them at that time. So this guy, this the, the, the organizer received um, the first call of God and all that. And then he had a church. Before long, he had a big church. So this the pastor of, of the church where he came out from just said, ah, let me go and see this guy. Let me go and visit him because he was doing an anniversary or something. Let me go and see him and visit with him. So, and he didn't want to be known. He didn't want them to know when he would arrive. So he parked his car afar off and then he strolled there. And when he strolled to the place, he said he entered the church. He saw cock. You know, hen. Hen. <laughs> hen. You know, in the, in the pastor, the new pastor's hand, he was using the hen to pray for them. As this cock crows every morning, may, you, may your life always sound out. As, is that not what that other guy is doing around? They're selling salt, selling soap, selling different kinds of things. Some guys are out of the way totally. But there are some that don't even now on that, they don't have any understanding of what the body of Christ is about. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of the body? You can see that it has measurement. It's a length, breadth, height, depth. And Paul was not praying to me. He was not, he was not, that prayer was not to ministers. He didn't say, I pray for those who are teaching you. I pray for the elders among you that they will know the length and the breadth and the height and the, all of them. Everybody must know the length, the breadth, the height and the depth. And then to know the love of Christ, that will even pass understanding. How many among our people knows up to understanding, not to now talk of what passes understanding? <laughs> Praise God. This is the reason why there is so much haphazard wrong presentation of the Lord. Hallelujah. He has foundations. He said the foundation is built upon the apostles and the prophets. Ephesians 2. What is this? So, 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 just like the body grows by that involuntary, you know, progression. And then um, there's a word that Pastor Ferreira used about it. I've forgotten that word now. That thing that make uh, that appropriate growth that does not make the tongue, you know, because the hand, my hand was like this before when I was a, when I was one year old, you know, or maybe two years, you just were at this length or so. It has now grown. So the tongue does not say, I say, the hand has grown like this. Let me also grow like this. And I say, it's not by a deliberate um, um, pastor, you know, oh, this pastor is doing this, so let me do this, or let me reduce my own. No, it's a mind thing. If we know the body of Christ, if we know the purpose of the body, everybody, every one of us will just take shape according to what the clockwork, the appropriate clockwork is speaking in our body. In our spirits, rather. Just as the body knows, there's a little growth in the clockwork of the body. That's it, pam, and then there's growth. That growth is interpreted to the tongue in, a me in its own measure. It is interpreted to the leg in its own measure. It is interpreted to the head in its own measure. And it is not by every one of us coming together and saying, okay, we are brethren, we are in the same room, or we are even preaching the same thing. No! It is by everybody being connected to the Lord because if we are all connected to the Lord and we know the purpose of the house, we, we, there will be adjusted growth. Everybody will know where they belong to. Everybody will give credence to this other person, you know, and all that, that is doing something that may be a little different. We will have understanding and we will grow. Recently, God was bringing me to understand a little bit about the, the evangelicals, you know, and I'm seeing that, oh, wow, I missed this a lot, a lot, a lot, you know. So let's see First Peter in chapter 1 and then I think verse 4. First Peter chapter 1. Okay, I'm rounding up now. I don't want us to, I will spend beyond um, 14 minutes more. Yeah. Yeah, none of these ones shall break their ranks, you know. But you see, and the rank is 
not per se the rank in ministry, but the rank in the minds of the believer. Okay, let's even use an example of ministry. There are ministries today that are so closed up, there are people who don't read any of that thing apart from what comes from their pastor. And it's so fearful to me because I don't know how a man can think that he alone can teach what is all way around it. Okay, maybe, be, maybe some people have their own crowd. We all have our own crowd anyway, <laughs> praise God. We all have our own crowd. And then you see, but that's why we need to understand the purpose of the house. Now, what is the purpose? Of, let's see First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. Verse 14, sir. Yes, down. Okay. As obedient um, children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of... I, I admit now in verse 4 from verse 4. So sorry. Verse 4, I thought as much. What to okay. Mm. What to take? Okay. So an inheritance. In, maybe I should start from 3, sir. Okay. All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to his abundant mercy, had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, mm. to an inheritance incorruptible mm. and undefiled, and that faded not away, mm. reserved in heaven for you, mm. who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Okay, praise, praise the pastor. Let, let's stop there. We will still continue to read because I don't want to miss those things. Look okay. at what I said. You see, because these are guys who receive from Jesus Christ. He said, the hope that they have is that they know of a certainty that they have been called to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled. It, you, can, you, you can't do a lawyer of it. You can't mix it. The inheritance to which you have been called. You can't, you can't mix it. You can't, you can't adulterate it. And it is reserved in heaven. Now, of course, what people, what people have thought is that because it is reserved in heaven, it is, you are going to have to go to heaven to get it, that's not what they, they, it's reserved in heaven. What does that mean? Heaven is the place where God lives. Heaven is the throne of God. You know, says heaven is thy throne. It is reserved within. It is placed with God. You understand? As a nobody, there's no thief that can come and collect that inheritance. And he say it's going to be the salvation of it is going to be revealed in the last times, in the last days. That's what I mean. Okay, let me let me see. There's something I wanted to say there. And it is in Christ Jesus when God raised him from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not, it will reserve in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed, unveiled in the last time. You see, people don't know the body, the, 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 the purpose of the body. See, one of the purposes here. There's a salvation to be revealed in the last days. One of the you know the purpose of the body of Christ, Christianity, is that we are waiting for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last. Bible says we are saved by hope. Paul talked about that. Paul talked about the fact that we are waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Is there any believer that think I should endure because of that hope? The only hope we endure is the hope of heaven or hope of rapture. And you see. If God has not promised something, if that is not the promise of God, you will hold on to it, but after a while it will, begin, it will become slippery. It will be strong enough. He said, this salvation is ready to be revealed. Paul said, that's what we're, I mean, Peter, he said, that's what we are hoping on. Hallelujah. So, there is a salvation that begins, immediately I become born again. But there is a salvation that is ready to be unveiled. In the last time and there is something promised to us there if we don't know about that salvation 
when trials and temptations come, as they said in the next verse, we won't know the reason why we should endure those trials and temptations because every other reason that we have cooked up for ourselves will not avail. Yeah. All right, sir. Some people have hope of, I don't worry, that is like our fathers. Oh, tomorrow will be great. Ah, don't worry, my son. Do you know that people who are, who are suffering in ministry today because they want to grow? Because they are sure that the way God helped Bishop Oedepo, God will help me too. I will endure. Is that the reason? Mm. What if you died there? Mm. Have you mm. not lost inheritance? You have not. Mm. There is an inheritance. It is kept in heaven. It is not in dollar. It is not in land. It is not in number of people. It is not in the anything. It is about doing what God has sent you to do. And then, in the last days, there is going to be an unveiling. You can make that last day as a man living on the earth. And it's possible you have gone on to heaven. But you are going to come back and there is a reward. How many people are saying, let me endure because of this reward that is about to be unveiled? That was all the apostles were. <laughs> okay, in Hebrews chapter 2, you know what Paul said? Paul said, for he has not given to the angels hmm. the word to come of which we preach. Hmm. The leadership of the new world, the leadership of the, of the new age of God's kingdom, has not been given to angels that have been given to us. How many people are thinking of the inheritance that is inside that thing, reserved in heaven? And they are saying, let me endure. People are enduring because, okay, let's let's just trust God. Maybe this thing, are, don't worry. After this next three years, uh, Tinubu will be voted out. Don't worry, Tinubu will be voted out. So that's their hope. Sir, most churches don't teach these things anymore. Most churches, they don't. They don't you, but you hear, you hear. Really, there was a teaching I did on Facebook some time ago, and somebody came and said, "Ah, this teaching is old. We don't we don't teach it anymore because we only you teach know. application to life, Bible yeah. application to life. We don't believe in abstracts, and it is those abstracts that make that that are the fundamentals. You can imagine." You can imagine. Uh, let's look at let's look at an example of application to life type of gospel that we teach. It's also it's also good though. It's also good application to life. Okay, they teach you how to put on electricity. Say okay, maybe you are a village boy or village girl. You just can say uh, once it is late, just see the way I did it. Just do it like that. That's application to life. But it's very easy to teach somebody that one. Very very easy. Very, very, but to teach for somebody electricity, they will write numbers that you think they are crazy. They say dy dx square root. Say, ah, what is this? But that's what produced the lights. That's what made the plane to fly. You see, the difference between those who know the mysteries of God is like those who manufacture the plane and put the law of lift and the law of gravity into into perspective. And they made the plane to be in such a way that it can fly. Then those who those who enter say, okay, oh, you know, there are people who are so that we are proud that we have entered, we entered plane. See people taking photos and put it on Facebook. See, I'm in a plane. No? I say, okay, you know, my issue is that what about the person who now manufactured the plane? We post with our cars. That's application life. It just our life is just about the externalities. We post, we post, because we think that Bible is not that hard. Let's just use the one we, just give us what we can use. That is Mount Sinai. Mount Zion is saying everybody can come in, is the Father's house. Moses does not have to go and know God for us. It's Mount Zion. The city of the living God and his children are gathered there. They are all with him. And he does not say, okay, you, you are, you know, who made you a prophet? You can't know this thing, Daddy. No, he doesn't. God is as close to us as we are willing to be close to him. 
And that's what the body of Christ is about. It says, for salvation that is to be revealed in the last days. So this is, so he now said, let's, let's read where Pastor Ferreira, where did you stop, Pastor? Um, I'll start yeah. from six. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. You see now, that those believers, having known those things, Peter was making reference to what the believers knew. Mm. The knowledge of him, the knowledge of his purpose. They know that God stands sure. Nothing can move God. And then God has an inheritance for them. And they know that that inheritance is kept in heaven for them. Nobody can touch it. That's why somebody, that's why Hudson Taylor can go to China. And that's why Livingstone can come and die here. That's why those guys, they were like crazy people who didn't love their lives. Bible say, for they not love, love their lives unto the death. Why? You think they don't want to build a house or, and have car and travel the world? Not so. But they were seeing something. You see, the problem with us is that the, what they were seeing is different from what we are seeing. What we are seeing are the things that the things that are here, temporal. God wants us to use them, but that's not it begins. That's not where it begins, and that's not where it ends. Uh -huh. It's just something that we use on the way. Hallelujah! So we now say you can overcome the manifold temptations because you already understand these things. It's not the way you, you rejoice. You can even rejoice. They beat the apostles. They were rejoicing. They were giving thanks. Who does that? Paul and Silas were put in prison. You think they don't want... Paul was a mighty man. Paul was a, <laughs> Paul was a popular guy. Paul was... He said he advanced in his, in his father's religion more than anybody in his, in his time. He was first among all equals, among Jewry. He was, he was trained with with i mean under the, the chiefest like somebody say wale shoyinka was my professor who taught me literature or chino achebe was the one who taught me literature or about i said was the one who taught me physics and mathematics mm. and then you are now grown through those not that knowledge that was what paul was for Paul to now say all this, I counted all these things, but don't. He was seeing something else. And that's what God said we should see. In, I think, um, 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians chapter 3, or chapter 4, he says, um, uh, maybe I don't know whether we can look at it. He said, uh, why we look not at things, at the things which are seen, but at the yeah. things which are not seen. So, these things, things are, are temporal. Yes. Things which are Temporal are seen, and the things which are not in, seen are, are not seen. Now there are things. So it's not as if they don't have a hope. They have a hope, so that our own hope is very fickle. Our own hope is tied to husband, tied to children, is tied to prosperity, is tied to going. Um, and God wants us to prosper. He don't don't think God doesn't want us to prosper. He's tried try to who gave us money. Who told you? Who told you that God needs money to be able to lift you? There are some things that God that will be bought for you that money can never buy. Instruction, instruction. God can God can overtake billions of nine of dollars and bring you into what somebody who doesn't have billions of dollars would would not what is not able to have. It will bring you into it. And I'm not saying yes. Want God wants us to have money, but don't say don't not to trust in uncertain riches. But you trust in God who giveth all, all things which lead to enjoy. Let me tell you this why I'm talking against money. Because we're going to take, you know, very soon, eh? very, very soon, we're going to take this thing that, that men call money eh? and we're going to collect it from the hand of the world. Eh? We're going to collect it and we redistribute the wealth of the, of, the, of the earth. One day we're going to talk about money. On this platform maybe apostolic in question people come and talk to us about what they call fiat money 
what what a good based money, good standard, and all of that. Want to we so, so that it's not, it's not just preaching. It's not that we want people to be holy. That's why we're talking about this. No, no, no. It's beyond that. Is that we know what these things are for. You know, you know what they are for. What ultimate money? Ultimately, you know what money is for. It is to start the divine program. That is what it is for. Do you know what how Jesus Christ got vehicle to go into Jerusalem? The kind of vehicle he needed. God wanted to show somebody in the night. Jesus Christ said, go to a place where food, three food parts meet. Say, you will see a man there. I mean, rather, I say, you see a coat, I mean, an ass and a, with its coat there. And then, that no, no man had ever sat upon. He said, losing it and bring it. Say, if anybody asks you, why are you losing it? He said, tell them, the Lord has need of it. I'm not saying he didn't have the money to buy, but sometimes, maybe, sometimes Jesus didn't have money in the post. Because there was a time they wanted to get money for tax, for, to pay temple tax, and the money was not available in the post. But they were not stranded. If you need, if you need a car now, as a child of God, to be traveling, God wants you to have a car for your children, for your family, so that you can drop them and that. Do you know that this world will not give you just because God wants you to have it? The world will not give you. You cannot go to the world. You can go to Pastor Dilly Matthews and say, God, God says you should give me uh, 50,000. Sir, I saw a dream and I saw you give me 50,000. Because I'm a child of God, I will look at it again, okay? It's all right. If I believe that that's what God is saying, I'll give you 50,000. But you know, you cannot go to the car, car lot, and say, God say, you should give me this car. The system of the world does not work that way. It has been, they have chained it with, with they guard it and chained it, chained it with silver and gold. If you don't have the money, there have been people, ministers of God, who slept on the roadside in uncompleted buildings because there was no money. And they cannot go to the hotel here and say, God say I should come. The hotel will say, okay, money. You cannot speak in tongues. Say shaba raba shaba. And they say, okay, don't worry, okay, this is your this is your room. I'm not saying miracles like that have not happened before. You understand? But what I'm saying is that it is not the it is not the way things work. It is not the way things work. So one the way God is taking us to is beyond money. See, we're going to collect money from the resources of the earth. We are going to collect it. The Lord moved me one morning, very not too long ago, and I said, see, we should grow beyond money. Because when God blessed Abraham, he didn't give him money. There was money in the days of Abraham. He bought his burial ground and where they buried him and his wife. He bought it. So there was money in the days of Abraham. But do you know, God gave him a land, a whole nation. And then he gave him the entire nation of the world. He's holding it in trust. Abraham's name is written on every nation. On every nation. Abraham's name is written. God, well, how, did they, how did they bless Joseph? He said, for the dew of heaven. He said, it was by the riches put forth by the sun. And the wealth put, us, put forth by the moon. How much do you want to buy that one? Do you know how much energy flows from the sun? How much? Who, Bill Gates can, all of the monies in the world can never, can never buy this, the, the energy that comes from the sun. And one man is blessed with it. So they don't know what they are talking So don't, don't sink with this system. There's another system. There's a system of God. We are in it already, but it is still coming. It is here, it is coming. It is here, it is coming. It is here, it is coming. There's a here part. There's a here and now part of it. So, it is coming. Now, do you know that it is possible to take from that which is coming and draw it to where you are now and live by it? That's what we call kingdom. Praise God. There's a kingdom that is coming. But you can draw it by faith. Hey, bless you, sir. You can draw that which is coming by faith and draw it to yourself and live in that administration of God. This is what they are talking about when they are saying that it cannot have they say the man child was 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 lifted to God at his throne. The wrath of the dragon cannot touch him. What that means is not that the man is physically flew away. No, but he, he had drawn kingdom. 
He had drawn that largesse of the inheritance of the nations. He had drawn it to himself such that there is nothing the devil does here that affects him. If they say dollar is uh, one million to naira, there's a way God just does it for you. When we came to this land, the Lord told me, he said, don't live like a Canadian. Don't live like Canadians. One of my, yeah, one of my friends called, I mean, greeted me today. He said, she said, I ah, welcome to the system. System, you resisted me. I'm not, I'm not under your system. Because that system, everybody in this land uses their life to serve the system. You earn a salary. And that's the same way in Nigeria also. In Nigeria, it's even worse. At least from 18, 19, people can get car here. We are own car and be paying small, small with their earnings. You are paying for your house small, small. Paying for your for your uh, this is small car small, small. You buy phone, you are paying small, small. You buy uh, data, you are paying small, 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 small. The person just is small, small until from 18 year old until he's 78, 90. Then one day he dies. It's, it's better than Nigeria because that the person that has a car here in 20 years of age in Nigeria, you will even have the car. For anybody to have car 20 in Nigeria, that his father is rich. <laughs> Praise God. His father is rich and has made something for him or her. Or yeah, it's breakthrough. What we call breakthrough is not mine in Boland. It's normal true. It's not breaking anything. You are not breaking anything. Nothing will be broken. It's just normal true. And they designed it like that. They designed for all that people to be poor and be struggling. So we should begin to look at money and say that this is but Jesus called it the unrighteous mammon. Mm. God will give us small feet. But when we understand it, the, the house of God, we can't subject subject the house of God to money. What is it? Somebody has houses, he has it. So it's now better than somebody who doesn't have a house. What's that? Mm. Peter, the only thing, Peter said, I mean, that's it, Peter. Paul said, I, Bible have his on record that at the end of Paul's life, he lived in his own rented apartment in Rome before he was beheaded. Rented apartments. Is, that, is there anybody that can preach a week now without mentioning Paul or without reading from his book? What, what inheritance do those people have? Those guys are going to, they are going to be in charge of galaxies. Not just uh, planets, entire galaxies. The the kind of life, you know, because they saw the administration of the inheritance. They saw what was in front. They saw what was. They're not just saying, ah, "Let be struggling, let be struggling." One day, God will make us rich. God will give us one rich man that will be sponsoring ministry. That's not. That's not their hope. <laughs> that, that hope is a very stupid hope, honestly. And that's what people are holding on to. So when they, some who cannot wait for it, they just need to sell salt. They will make soap and sell, make oil and sell, make this one and sell. And they have bias. Yes, they have bias. <laughs> because people are uneducated. Hallelujah. We are, to, we are to set entire nations free. Entire nations. Nigerians will like, my, my, myself and Pastor Benny were sharing before we, start, before we started the meeting. Powerful. Liberate entire nations. And this is the ordinary believer. Not, not even uh, uh, yes, yeah, this one had service, so you know, not even the the ministers who continue tomorrow by the grace of God. Can we just pray for ourselves? We'll, Pastor, I will continue from that place where we stopped. Um, thank you very much for, for reading for us. Can we just pray in the name of the Lord? Lord, give me, let's pray that Ephesians, Ephesians 3.16. Can we pray Ephesians 3.16? Can we all open our Bible to Ephesians 3.16? Brunedi says, Soto Branisha, do the sister so during the day. That he will grant me, Lord, according to 
the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in my inner man that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith that I being wow. and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all things what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that I may be filled with all the fullness of God let it be so for me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen me. Let me know the length, the breadth, the height, and, the depth, and to know the love of Christ. Let your people know the length, the breadth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be so for me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, people of God. Thank you. Uh, amen ministers of god let me put this beautiful video that i am seeing here um, to help you. this is apostle douglas he's the apostle in that lagos area <laughs> hallelujah god bless you. i'll be there fully tomorrow amen god bless, you. god bless you sir that 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 is a very interesting topic yes absolutely and absolutely it's a very important topic the hope of his calling yes absolutely and I believe that any any church that failed to see the hope of the calling will turn back to egypt yes yes you, don't see the hope. you have to go back to egypt absolutely you have to go absolutely. back to egypt yes that's yes. the, the 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 journey for 40 years they could not see it hmm. uh they said, let us make captains for ourselves yes let's go back to egypt yeah and um, you see right now some pastors uh they could not see that please don't they, go let me just greet you before you go sir sir mass yeah i'm hearing thank you, you so much thank you so much sir okay we'll share you you have some more time tomorrow by god's grace and then uh, god the that thank, want you also, thank you so much sir yeah ministers that also want to they believe that god wants them to say one uh, something or the other and then um, you have the time tomorrow by God's grace, and then we'll round off by next tomorrow. Pastor Chidi from Australia, God bless you, Minister of God. He just came back from the Philippines, He's tired, but he said he will be here this morning. Uh, I don't know what, I think it's it's morning at their own time, maybe midnight or something. Something, no, it's not midnight, or it's morning, actually, maybe at six or so a.m. in their own place. But they have gone ahead of uh, Nigeria. We, Nigeria should be experienced about 9 30 now, so they will maybe 10 o'clock. Or so, their own time. And Pastor uh, Brad Toba, God bless you. Thanks for coming. Pastor Ferreira from Essex in the UK, God bless you for coming. Pastor Dapel, God bless you from Jaws, I think, yeah. Pastor uh, uh, Brother Peter Ikuga is uh, is a fellow. He's in the defense here. Yeah. We are all in the army of God in this in this region. God bless you, man of God. He's a minister of God, and uh, I appreciate him for coming. Um, Sister Sarah Bassi, Sister Sarah has joined us from Scotland this, today, and um, Pastor Ben Goshoba uh, in uh, River State. God bless you. Thank you. Adiola Dissignon, God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. From I think you're in the UK now. I saw you saw an abroadish environment around you sometimes back. I think you're there. You know, Esther Dele Matis, God bless you. Pastor Busola, God bless you. Thanks for coming. That's my wife. We, we greet all of you together. And uh, uh, thank you very much. God bless you for being here. Abi, okay, I don't, okay, Abi, okay, Adiola Adishino is in Nigeria. Okay, God bless you. Thanks, thanks. All right, um, Abi, thank you very much. And um, jo Joshua Matis, God bless you. Pastor Felix, okay, boy, God bless you. Thank you very much. In Abuja, Bratochi Femene. God bless you. Thanks for coming around. Okay. Uh, Brother Chika. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Odea Chidea Tablet. I like to know. I like that mm. name is curious. That's a beautiful name. I like the word Chidea. I hope I pronounce it well. God bless you. Mommy Adi. God bless you, ma. That's our mommy from um, um, Abuja. In Buse too in Abuja. God bless you, man. Thanks for coming. Ah, uh, man of God, Pastor Abraham Ade Adonisi. God bless you. 
God bless you, sir, for coming. Innocent Isaac, thank, Isaac, thanks for coming. And uh, the, uh, 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 Pastor Benjamin Alika was here. Uh, Pastor Barventura was around. Okay, 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 he's still around, I think. And so many other people were 30 something, so, but now we're 20. I guess people have started going now. God bless you. I was going to read all of the things that were put here, but because of time, uh, I may not be able to read everything, but I'm sure it was just corroborating what, what I have been saying. God bless you for all the contributions. God bless you. I'll, I'll, I'll find a way of um, copying them out and uh, maybe I'll post them. Post the program. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a lovely night. We'll see you tomorrow again by 8 o'clock Nigerian, 8 o'clock, um, um, what do you call it, UK, 1 o'clock Canada, and um, 3 o'clock there's Toronto and then New York, and then and uh, North Carolina and all of those places. God bless you, everyone. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Lovely night, rather. <laughs> Sorry. You are at night. God bless you. Good night, all. Thanks, sir. God bless you Thank all. You, Good night. Thank God you, God. Man of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thanks, sir. Yeah, God bless you, sir. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing this great truth. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely night to everyone. Bye. -bye. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, good to see your face, Adiola. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you all. Bye. Okay.